Greetings, this is Jason again, and I am doing a small review of my newest thing. It's a OBD2 Bluetooth adapter. It's one of the cheap, generic Chinese Bluetooth adapters that you can get. This one was like about $15 online. I've actually had it for a while, but I haven't been able to make a video on it because um, I had to get a new phone so I could film myself using it on my old phone. So this one uses, you can use this with the Torque app on the Android market. Um, there may be something similar for iPhone, but since I don't have an iPhone, nor do I want an iPhone, I can't tell you. So this is similar to the one that I had before that plugged into the laptop, but this one's entirely Bluetooth. So I'll show you how it works and we can try it out here. First, you just gotta plug it in onto your dash, and depending on your car, that may be easy or it may be hard. So if you'll bear with me just a half second here, I'll plug it in and we'll, we'll uh, go on to the next step here. Okay, easier said than done one-handed, so I'm setting the phone down for a sec. Okay, the adapter is now plugged in, so I'm going to turn the key on, the engine off, and we're going to try it out. Now I've got my old phone here. This is my uh, Samsung uh, Fascinate, which is a Galaxy S series phone, and I've got the ice cream sandwich uh, update loader on it. It's not an official ice cream sandwich update. It's one that I've loaded myself. And it's also got the neat TV on off screen. So we're going to set this up right now. We've got to unlock it. And the, here's the program here. It's called Torque Free. There's a paid version too that adds more features. I haven't tried it, but this is what uh, I have on here. Got to make sure your Bluetooth is turned on, which you can go to your menu here. So go to Bluetooth, on, tap on Bluetooth here. And you want to search for your devices. And it appears to have found it already. It shows up as OBD2. So I'm going to tap on that. I'll say pairing. Pairing, pairing. And the code on this one was 1234. And it doesn't say that anywhere in the documentation. So it's just something I figured out. 1234. Done. And then, okay, pairing, and now it says paired. So we go back to the home screen and launch the Torque application. Say okay, and there's the dials. So I'm going to balance this on my steering wheel. And you can see it's already seeing it, connected to ECU. So everything's good there. So as you can see right now, nothing's happening because the engine's not running. So right now we've got the dials loaded up on the screen. One is the one is here is engine load in the top corner, and the next that's miles per gallon, and then below that's throttle and then speed. So we're going to start the car. And there you see everything. So, my engine load's a little high right now because I need, actually need to change the oil. I've got the little thing on the dash saying change oil. I think probably as the oil gets older, it kind of gets gunky. So, I think everything's kind of settling down now. Now if I rev the engine, you see all the load and things change. So we're going to add another dial. So I'm not moving right now, so the speed is not changing and then the miles per gallon is not changing. So, go to this screen here, and these are widgets in the program. It operates almost entirely off of widgets, so if you've added widgets on an Android phone, this is kind of how it did. So, 
right now I think it's running in Celsius mode. So it's saying the coolant is 50 C, which is, you know, 100 something range. So, oh, 48 C. And you can change that. Some of the things don't update. If you change them to Fahrenheit, they still say it's C, but you can see as the engine warms up, the coolant is warming up as well. So, we're going to add the all data widget on here. So you hold down the screen, add display, and all data. And you can see all sorts of stuff. And there's even a uh, heads up display mode, which flips your screen up reversed. And with that, um, the, you can actually take the phone and put it on your dash and if you do it just right you can see the phone being reflected off your windshield kind of like if you've ever driven a Corvette with a heads-up display it's similar to that so right now we're not accelerating we're not doing anything engine loads at 29 percent timing so as I push down the gas you can see the timing is advancing fuel right now it's saying my in, my fuel is at 23 percent the voltage is 13.6, 13.7. And uh, let's add another widget here and find some more information on it. You want to delete a widget, you just hold down, hit delete. So we're going to. You can have a dial, a graph, or a display. So a dial would be a uh, like a gauge, a graph would be like that coolant graph, and then display would just be numbers. So we're going to add a dial, and let's see, let's do fuel trim, and we'll do the large dial because it's easier to film a large dial. So our fuel trim is staying pretty close to zero right now because it's not really adding or deleting fuel. see as it slows down the fuel goes negative more that's just because the uh, on this Jeep when you let off the gas it actually cuts off some of the injectors so if we go there's another widget I want to add here that talks you can see I think it's the air status so we're gonna add that widget here just Is fuel air status widget. So it says, as soon as if a fuel system status closed loop using O2 sensor for fuel mix. Secondary air status, no data not supplied. So, and as you're driving, you can actually see this one change. Sometimes when you when you accelerate and decelerate, it just briefly goes back into open loop mode. And I'm not really sure why, but I guess it's just because it doesn't need closed loop or it can't really figure it out. Uh, you can have um, you can pull up your PIDs if you have a check engine light. You can do that on here. Uh, let's add a display barometric pressure. This the Jeep supports barometric pressure, so that's the barometric pressure right now in kilopascals. And you see it doesn't change because this is actually sensing the outside barometric pressure. So we're going to delete that, and this is just this is everything that's being pulled from the co the computer in the car. So let's go to display. There is altitude. You can use your GPS to get your speed. You got engine load, engine RPM, fuel level, intake air temperature, intake manifold pressure. So. Intake temperature is 28C. It's pretty warm out right now, but it's raining. Uh, let's see. Man intake manifold pressure. Don't. 30 kilopascals. You can see as I rev the engine up and then let off, it goes up and down. That one, delete, add display, display. And each of these is available in a display, a graph, or a dial. So a kilometers per liter, liters per 100 kilometers, miles per gallon, O2 volts. Actually, let's do O2 volts, but we'll do it as a graph. 
That's an interesting little graph. O2 volts bank one, sensor one. So, you know, on an O2 sensor, when it's working correctly, it's switching up and down, up and down. So, you can see it up and then down, up and down. So see, I just revved the engine up and it kind of went up a little higher there for a second. So that one's pretty neat. Let's add another one here. Let's uh, we'll add some small ones here. We'll do some graphs. We'll put uh, fuel trim, small. And we can say move, and just drag it up. Add another one, graph. What looks interesting? Timing advance, small, move. And you can set these up. You could mount your phone or Android device on your dash and um, see this information here. So we're going to rev it up again. So you see my timing is advancing. Fuel trim is staying. It wiggles a little bit, but then it stays pretty close. Let's add another one here. Add another graph and voltage, fuel pressure, fuel pressure. I don't know what that one will do. Uh, that one doesn't seem to be moving. So that one probably just doesn't have any data. It has a, a boost meter on it where it'll display your boost. Uh, I don't have a turbo on this Jeep, but it pulls in data. I don't know if it's just reading manifold pressure or what. Let's go down to the bottom here. Turbo boost gauge, here we go. And you can overlay these too, so see, it's seeing something. But let's go and see if we can pull any PIDs here. I shouldn't have any. Go to actions. Show logged faults, requesting fault codes. So you can do pretty much anything with this you could with a handheld scanner. And it says no faults in the ECU, so that's good that Jeep is behaving itself. So anyway, this you can get these. It's uh, just search for Elm 327 Bluetooth. Uh, you can use like a Google Shopper or you can go to I think mine I got through Alibaba Express or AliExpress.com, and um, it's just pretty neat. If you drive around with it, you can set your uh, miles per gallon in real time and average, and you can mount it on your dash, and you can kind of monitor the way you drive to see how well you're staying, you know, fuel efficient. And uh, I just like doing this. This is a little animation that was added in the uh, a Android gingerbread, but it's also an ice cream sandwich. It's a little TV thing. It's kind of neat. So, anyway, um, if you want one of these things, just look for them. They're not that expensive, and you just pair it up to your Android phone, and you can do all sorts of cool stuff with it.